In this last video, we will repeat the process, this time by running a numerical base design where the depth variation coefficients are obtained from the calibration of the homogeneous soil units in 3D finite element method. This will allow us to compare the results between a root-based and a numerical base design. We started with a calibration of the clay unit, which has the same properties as the ones defined in the root-based design. That is, a submerged unit weight of 8 kN per cubic meter, a small strain shear modulus of 150 MPa, and an undrained shear strength of 70 kPa at the top and 150 kPa at the bottom. For the calibration, we assume a narrower design space than that of rule-based design. The design space consists of many monopile geometries that define an envelope in which the optimum monopile design is expected to lie. Here we add 8 geometry datasets and we define their properties according to the information in the manual. We then set the values of the target displacement, which is the maximum lateral displacement at ground level, normalized over the outer pile diameter. As we have mentioned in a previous video, for the target displacement we assume a value of 0.20 for all clay models. After that, we multi-select all 8 geometry datasets and press the Generate button. This operation will take a couple of minutes, after which we can again select all datasets and press the Calculate button. Finally, we press the Parameterize button to automatically generate a calibrated .tvf file on the project folder. In a later step, we will import this file into the Analysis mode to create a layered profile. We will repeat the calibration process, this time for the sand unit. We create a new project and then save it under the name Numerical Base Design Sand. We make sure that the material type is correct, so we change it to Sand. We then define the properties of our sand, which are the same as those defined in the rule based design. That is, a submerged unit weight of 10 kN per cubic meter a small strain shear modulus of 191.6 MPa, an angle of internal friction equal to 39 degrees, and a dilatancy angle of 9 degrees. Afterwards, we move to the calibration mode. Here we calibrate our sand unit against the same 8 geometry datasets as defined for the clay unit. It is important to note here that even though the design space used to calibrate the clay and the sand units is exactly the same, there is a difference in the value of the target displacement. Therefore, this value will be set for sand models to 0.15 instead of 0.20 that we had defined for our clay materials. Generally, we recommend that the values for the relative target displacement at the mud line are within the range of 0.15 and 0.30, but depending on the situation, these values may vary. We then proceed with the final steps of calibrating the sand unit. First, we multi-select all eight geometry datasets and then we press the Generate button to generate the 1D model. After that, we press the Calculate button, and finally, we select the datasets again, and press the Parameterized button to automatically generate the calibrated .dvf file in the project folder. We then move to the Analysis mode and check that the file has been successfully created, and after that, we save our project. Now that we have created the two calibration files, one for the clay unit and one for the sand unit, we can proceed with a final design for our layered soil. But before doing that, we need to take an extra step to extract those DVA files from their respective project folders. So let's go to the project folder for the clay unit and copy the calibrated.dvf file to another folder. To differentiate this file from other calibration files, we will rename it as calibratedclay.dvf. We do the same for the sand unit and rename the file to calibratedsand.dvf. Now that we have everything we need, we can create a new project and save it as Numerical Base Design Layered. We don't need to do any further calibrations, so we advance directly to the Analysis Mode tab. In the Solid Reaction Curves tab, we select Import and navigate to the calibrated clay and calibrated sand.dvf files that we have just extracted 
and we press the open button to import them into the Monopoly designer. We see that both files have been successfully imported, so if we move forward to the Soil Layers tab, here we add the five layers and their respective soil depths. Afterwards, we make sure to assign the correct DVF files to the corresponding layers. Next, in the Monopile Geometry and Structural Properties, we define the geometry and material parameters of the final design, namely a height of 56 meters, an embedded pile length of 21.5 meters, and an outer diameter of 7 meters. In the Thickness Variation section, we input the thickness segments of the final design. For that, we assume a simple pattern with a pile thickness ranging from 6 to 8 cm. In workload, we input the resultant horizontal load and moment, which in this example is a single load case corresponding to a horizontal load of 10 MN applied at an elevation of 56 meters. Finally, under 1D analysis, we press the Calculate button. For the final step, we need to generate and calculate the 3D design verification model. When we press the Generate button, Plaxis Monopile Designer will firstly run or update the 1D analysis. Afterwards, it will generate the soil layers, sublayers, and structure. It will then divide the pile into slices to extract the raw soil reaction at different depths. And finally, it will generate the calculation phases and adjust the numerical settings accordingly. Respectively, when we press the Calculate button, Plaxis Monopile Designer will firstly calculate all three phases generated in the previous step. It will also extract the raw soil reaction curves. And most importantly, it will extract the data to be displayed in the results mode. With that in mind, let's advance to the results mode to inspect the output of the analysis. Here we select the design verification checkbox to compare the results between the numerical based 1D analysis and the 3D finite element model. As we can see, the values of eta and rho are much better than before, indicating that a better approximation is achieved by the numerical-based method. To provide a clear comparison between the two methods, the predicted monopile behavior curves can be exported and plotted in a spreadsheet together with the predictions of the 3D finite element method. To do that, we open the table tab, right-click on the results table, and select copy all. We then paste the results table into a spreadsheet, and of course we repeat the process for the rule-based layer design results. The differences between the predictions of the three methods are now apparent. The orange line represents the 1D rule-based design analysis, the yellow line represents the 1D numerical-based design analysis, and the blue line represents the 3D finite element analysis, which we consider to be the most accurate. 